You may have noticed that bows are everywhere right now. In our hair, on our bags, around our necks. From my memory, there hasn't been a trending object that has had such a literal stranglehold on us for a while. So why? Today, we're taking a deep dive into this frilly accessory and its meteoric rise to trendiness. Has this been a story centuries in the making? Will we see a bow riddled Fortnite skin in the next two months? Let's talk about it. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing my predictions for the bow killing next big trend in fashion. Exciting. Hi, I'm Kathleen and I used to design graphics for a large well-known mall brand. And now I'm paying for my sins by making YouTube videos about sustainable style and creativity, among other things. All that to say, I have firsthand experience prospecting trends before they hit the mainstream and subsequently watching them die under an avalanche of the next big thing. And I've been wanting to talk about bows for a while now. You may remember in my 2023 trend predictions video earlier this year, we talked about large novelty details like bows gaining popularity this year and oh boy, have they ever. The recent launch of the Bagu and Sandy Leong collab is a prime example. Sandy Leong is known for adding ribbon details and you best believe they slapped some ribbons on some Bagu bags and it sold out virtually instantly. Breaking the internet, breaking bank accounts, breaking hearts, including my own. I don't want to talk about it. So why bows? Hmm? They've been around for uh, ever. Like Ever. I guess the better question is why now? As always, our answer lies in the soupy, perfect storm of society and the cyclical nature of style. Let's briefly go back to the very beginning and touch on the history of bows. Wow, riveting. Rib ribboning? These bad boys have been around as long as knots have existed. It's just one of the simplest ways to tie something together. And would you believe that's a common need for clothing items? And it always has been. It's found all over this big, blue, beautiful world. We have the decorative knot or masubi of the obi belt in Japan. We have certain styles of cravat, which was the successor of these starched ruffs that our fancy lads rocked up into the 1600s or so. I love these bad boys. Let's bring them back. The roughs, not not the guys. They're they're dead. Also, speaking of cravats and bows, are we all picturing Mr. Darcy rocking a cravat in a Sandy Leong Bagu Crescent bag? Because I am, and I'm loving it. Moving into the 18th century, ribbons and bows were still rocked by all people, all genders. And this is where Miss Ma'am Marie Antoinette enters the picture. The building. The castle? Style icon, influencer of her day. Also, if you remember, the film featuring Kirsten Dunst as our main lady had tons of pastel, uber feminine and slightly subversive art direction, and most importantly, bows. It came out in 2006, and it had a big effect on style at the time. And what style period has exploded in popularity in the last couple years? Oh yeah, the early aughts, like 2006. Interesting. Is Marie Antoinette solely responsible for bows being popular right now? No, because Bridgerton and Little Women have something to do with it too. But hold your horses, okay? Let's talk about the 20th century. For a large chunk of the last century, bows have become more subdued while we opted for updated silhouettes and cleaner lines. And then, you guessed it, as always, the pendulum swings. And in the 80s and 90s, big statement bows are back in in a major way. This is where our large statement bow inspiration came from in the 2023 trend predictions video. A big boy. A big boy. <laughs> well, a big bow is iconic. And I mean like literally in the visual design sense. It's an easily recognizable icon. And we've seen a lot of super specific icons become popular in the last 10 years or so. We had bikes and owls in the 2010s when we were in our Tumblr eras. Super specific flowers like daisies and tulips. Daisies were really big when I was working at insert brand here. As well as fruit like watermelons and lemons and oranges were huge for a while. And speaking of, this is a totally different video topic, but I wonder if this recent trend of small, hyper-specific graphic elements is due to emojis. 
we've never been more inundated with icons than we have since the age of the internet began. And we all know how pervasive, literal emoji-covered merchandise is, especially in kids' style. So is this just the cool girl version of this? We can't. We can't talk about this. We're here to talk about bows. Somebody's gotta give me the kick because I am lost in the sauce. So, changing subjects. Let's talk about the patriarchy. Well, kind of. At least more recently, like the last couple hundo years or so, in Western society, bows have been seen as a classically feminine detail. Again, back to being a literal icon, what's traditionally added to otherwise non-gendered characters to designate that they are in fact female? A bow. Okay, maybe like eyelashes and a skirt, but definitely a bow. I'm not gonna you, Miss Pac-Man and Hello Kitty. It's become this sort of shorthand for girly. I grew up in the 90s, and you best believe that I had these kind of ribbon bows all up in my hair most days. And it's no secret that nostalgia has deeply rooted itself as a pillar in current culture. Is it because the world seems to speed up as you age? And also the feeling of technology outpacing us? Is it because the last three or five or 10 years have had us yearning for a simpler, more innocent time? Are more of us in therapy working on healing our inner child? children. So it could also be said that this nostalgic and kind of bittersweet look at the past from the present moment has become this exploration and celebration of girlhood. Do I even need to mention the fashionable and plastic elephant in the room? She's right behind me, isn't she? So as a result, very super girly style is popular right now. And I love it. It feels empowering and fun. You know I'm all about playing dress up on this channel. So adding copious amounts of ruffles and ribbons and bows sounds like a great time to me. Not to mention these ribbon and bow details span a multitude of the sun really has something to say today. A multitude of stylistic subgenres. It's no secret that core aesthetics, cottage core, norm core, etc core are big and have been big and will continue to be big for a while ever i don't know and bows are right at home with quite a few of them we've got ballet core that kind of ekes its way into ballet sleaze which touches on the downtown girl aesthetic and then we've got things like craft core crochet core i don't i don't think those are real i think i just made those up i know i'm super oversimplifying like huge swaths of personal style and skilled craft work with these core designations but bear with me we're talking about bows okay speaking of my own girlhood nostalgia the base feeling that this bow trend evokes in me is it reminds me of the costume design in my favorite mangas growing up like Cardcaptor Sakura, Tokyo Mew Mew. They always had bows. That's the good stuff. And bows aren't only found in trendy fashion right now. It's also a currently popular pastiche in interior design and packaging. And I feel like it's kind of a classic interior design option. So maybe that's a bit of a cop out, like specifically for the holidays. Think wreaths and presents. But its current trendy iteration, like the version that looks like the emoji, is also finding its way into decor. Do I want to cover my Christmas tree in tiny little satin bows this holiday season? Yeah, so sue me. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Bows are hot right now, and they have been hot for a while, which means something else is coming soon. That's my guess. So what might we see entering the trend arena to potentially take its place? And I'm not a soothsayer, and honestly, I don't really care. Even if they go out of style, people should still use them and wear them because they're cool and they like them. But I do think that this is a fun and interesting creative exercise to use the culture around us to glean details about what people might like soon and why. Here's my main one. Knots, harnesses, and bits. Like, horse bits. This aligns with the original kind of functionality aspect of bows. Knots and harnesses and bits, similar to bows, they hold things together, they have a job, they have a function. They have a slightly more edgy, masculine vibe. And it's plausible to think that with the pendulum swung so far into the feminine aspect, we might be swinging all the way back over into masculine or maybe androgynous. Also, there's another layer to this. This harness bit knot motif was really popular in the 80s and 90s in patterns and graphics. Just like large novelty details like bows, which we predicted, and look what happened. So this knot harness bit combo originally stemmed from a more like equestrian polo realm and nautical sailor realm. Kind of preppy, kind of classic. I can see like coastal grandma in here using some of these elements in a more classic Americana style that's popular with Ralph Lauren. Tommy Hilfiger 
etc. But also horse girl energy and canned fish have been trending and they're like the opposite on the alignment chart from coastal grandma and preppy polo player. So all I'm saying is everyone can get a little bit of this action. There's also the fact that like a bit and a harness speaks to a more alternative fashion style. They've been using these types of countercultural details for a long time. You've got leather harnesses more in the mainstream to style with outfits, chains with chunky hardware, the list goes on. Even this necklace that I get asked about all the time in my videos is a horse bit necklace. Sorry everybody, I thrifted it don't know what to tell you. So that's my main idea of the potential bow killer coming soon. But I don't think that bows are going to disappear. I do think that we might start to see other items paired with bows. First, I think we're going to start to see more roses. And not in like a print floral way. I mean rosettes, rosebuds like this used in trim or as decorative 3D details. This ribbon and rose combo can be found in fluttery sleepwear or more historical garments, which are popular. Heck, we just saw Kendall Jenner rock this vintage Dior nightgown with little rosette and ribbon details. And it happens to be the exact vintage Dior nightgown that I thrifted for like $4. It's confirmed Kendall Jenner copied me. I don't blame her. And finally, after roses, we might also start to see bells paired with ribbons, especially as we near the holidays. Historically, they're two items that have been paired together and they have this purely decorative classic vintage vibe that I think fits nicely into what's popular right now. So. Have you noticed bows everywhere? Do you have any other ideas as to why this might be? Let me know down in the comments. I'm also super curious what you think about my analysis, my predictions, and if you have any predictions of your own. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I'm all about wearing what you want to wear, styling what you want to wear, like I already said. So please take this video for what it is. Just an exploration into the hows and whys of our current culture. Wear whatever you want. I hope you'll subscribe if you'd like to see more of me in the future, because I'm just going to say it. I want to see more of you in the future platonically and before i go i have very exciting news we just hit 50,000 subscribers and on almost exactly the second birthday of this channel we're growing up so fast a year ago we were hitting 2k next stop the moon if you like this video you might like this similar style deep dive video or if you want to change of pace sometimes i mic myself up and go to the thrift store and it's a very chaotic groovy time you're such a sweet stinky little thing and it's been such a joy to hang out with you every week this is mushy i gotta get out of here before it gets worse so i'll see ya i love ya and goodbye